This video will do some animations of the vibrating string solution to the classical wave equation under some different circumstances. Okay, so I've got my graph here, which I've made on Desmos, which is a free online graphing calculator. So links in the description for this graph and any other graphs that you'll see from this channel. So I have my classical wave equation solution. So my individual solutions, uh, P and X of T, are, is the uh, sine n pi x over l cosine n pi v t over l, where my l is uh, specified by this little slider up here. My v is specified by a, a little slider as well, so I can change those values as I want. And we're going to do this animation over a, over a period of time. So that's for an individual uh, normal mode solution, as we said from our previous video. So the total uh, the total function is going to be I have uh, c1 time I have a constant times this individual normal mode. So this n1 is just the uh, values of n of one, two, all the way up to some maximum number. This maximum number is determined by the length of this array of coefficients I have, which is up here. So this is going to be 1 times the first normal mode, where n equals 1, plus 0 times the second, uh, where n equals 2. And I'm going to change this as we go to see different uh, normal modes and also combinations. But what I have, and what I, in the end, what I have graphed here is the equation that I have boxed in the previous video where we derive this is the final amplitude versus uh, space and time for our, our given wave. You can see that I have the boundary conditions on these red dots were clamped down at the edges. Uh, zero is is in the inside of the shaded region here. L is the other end, and my wave at this case is just a is just a sine function that goes from zero to L. So if I turn on this animation, let time start going. So the space part is a cosine, so it starts off at a large value goes to zero, goes to the other side, completes its revolution to two pi, and then is just going to keep repeating after that. So this individual solution here for this one normal mode is just that it goes back and forth and it stays in the same place. This is why we called them standing waves, as you saw, because they stay in the same place in space and they just move around in time. They're not moving to the left or to the right, they're just changing what their relative magnitude is. Okay, so that is for the first normal mode. Now if I change this to where it is the second, what you see instead is that there are two waves. So this is a sine of 2 pi x over L for the spatial part, and you have two parts, one, one maximum here and one maximum over here that they alternate back and forth in time. Notice also that they're alternating faster because their time part, cosine n pi vt over l is at 2 as well, so they move twice as fast. This point in the middle here that doesn't move at all, this is called a node, and this is there's one node for n equals 2, zero nodes for n equals 1. You might guess for n equals 3, what we're going to have is three waves, and there's going to be two nodes. So still clamped down at the end, but we have one node here and one node here, and three distinct amplitudes as we go. And that pattern continues itself pretty much indefinitely as far as we go, n equals 4, n equals 5, whatever we want to make it, it just keeps getting faster and faster. Okay, so that's the effect of going up, changing our, changing our value of n. What if we change the value of l? Okay, so we're having l equals 1 right now, so if l is smaller, we have the wave goes a little bit faster. So the wave is going faster from side to side because its speed is related to the length of the box that we see down there. And as we make it very small, the wave goes much, much faster. When the wave gets, when the, okay, that animation doesn't work so well. But when the wave gets very big, that's where we're going to see the slowest animation of all. So smaller box equals faster, higher energy wave. Keep that in mind for our uh, quantum mechanics down the road. I can change the value of V as well. 
that just change how changes how fast it oscillates back and forth in time. If I make it low, it goes very slowly. If I make it large, it goes very quickly. But I'm pretty I'm pretty happy with the speed it goes at this kind of default speed there. Okay, so that's the that's what it does over time. That's the effect of the num value of n. That's the effect of l and v. What if we do combinations of these? So what if instead of just a single wave, we make two waves? So if I mix two together, notice there's no more node. They mix together. So the wave kind of, you see it traveling a little bit more on the right, then a little bit more on the left, and that changes over time as well. So the more I make this one, if I change the mixture, it changes what the wave looks like as it traverses back and forth. So I can make it more of psi one, and it looks more, or sorry, more of, of u one, and it looks more like for the n equals one case. It just looks like more and more like it's being pushed a little bit from left to right. Now, mixing various combinations of these things together, you can do crazy things like, if I do, for example, like 20, 10, 5, 1, 2, 1. Now I see a wave, which starts at the right, and like a whip, travels from left to right. Then it hits the other border and it travels back. So I can get that kind of behavior. So remember I said you can get any function that obeys the boundary conditions can be represented by these functions. So lots of, lots of things can be done here. 10, 10, 5. Um, the amplitude is not getting bigger because I'm restraining the amplitude um, to be 1. So you see that I have the one over n in front of my total there, where n is the sum of all my coefficients. So it would be getting bigger with me choosing these large values, but I've chosen to keep it at the same amplitude. There it's even more of a case where it's kind of being, where it's a whip that's going kind of even harder there. Uh, we can do different kinds of things to do different kinds of behaviors that we might be interested in. So... There we can see various kind of subwaves traveling back and forth, and you know any com any function you can imagine can be represented within within this uh, functional form here as long as it obeys those boundary conditions. So that's our animation of the vibrating string. That was our class. That was our one example solution to the classical wave equation, and now we're going to move on to what is the general solution to our wave equation for quantum particles.